Welcome, this is question number 10 on the T and Ready math practice test for grade 5. The question says 64 divided by the quantity 15 minus 5 plus 12 divided by 2 plus 9 times 2 minus 1. And they want us to evaluate the expression and the entire answer provided. So this is an order of operations question because there's lots of stuff going on here. So a lot of times when I taught in high school, the kids would come in, students I should say, the students would come in knowing PEMDAS, but they had no, they sort of knew what it was, but they just knew to apply it, but not what to do with it. So I always converted it into a bit of a pyramid. That's supposed to be an O there, or. A bit like this, and this is an A. I don't know why it ends up looking like a four. My pen's been clippy today. So, parentheses comes first. Exponents come next. Now, the MD part of PEMDAS is where they would become confused because MD indicates that you should always do multiplication first, but that's not always true. They're at each level. You have to look leveled down. You start at this level, then move to this level. Once you get to the MD level, it could also be DM. You could be doing division first. The only thing you have to look for is which operation happens on the left. Just like when you read left to right, assuming you read the standard way that you probably would if you're taking this test, um, you're going to read from the left side of the page to the right. So if division comes first, left, right, you do that first, not before multiplication. The same is also true of addition and subtraction. Despite what subtraction will tell you when, you're, when addition is not around, it is no better than addition. It is at the same level. So if addition comes first on the left, you do that first. If subtraction comes first on the left, you do that. So the pyramid tends to work pretty well for me, but whatever. Choose your own adventure. Now, the very first thing it says I need to do is parentheses. So here's a parentheses, so I'm going to start with that first. But before I get to that, I'm going to start writing down all of the parts. 64. Now, do you need to write down all the steps all the time? Absolutely not, but as I've stated in previous videos, I tend to write more than I need to just because it helps keep everything nice and organized. So before I can even get to this, or to get to these things, I need to deal with the parentheses first. The primary objective in the beginning is that. So I need to look inside the parentheses and start applying the order of operations as it goes. So subtraction, addition, division. Well, division wins because it's at a totally different level than add subtract. So I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to bring down 64 divided by, and then I do 15 minus 5 because I'm not ready for that yet, plus now I can do 12 divided by 2. Well, I know that 12 or 2 goes into 12 six times, so I'm going to put a 6 there. Now, I'm still in parentheses, it's still, each time you get one done, you have to go back to the top of the pyramid. Parentheses, again, is the primary goal, and there is one, and so I go down and subtract and add. This is where that add subtract thing really pays off. See, subtract could be first, as long as it's to the left, you'll notice that subtraction is here. So, 64 divided by 15 minus 5 is 10, plus 6, plus 9, times 2, minus 1. Now, we're still in parentheses in the next step. 10 plus 6 is 16, so it's the only thing left. So 64 divided by 16 plus 9 times 2 minus 1. Now, no parentheses left, no exponents, so it's multiply divide next. The first multiply divide going left to right is division. So 64 divided by 16. Well, if I go over here and start thinking about, okay, what do I multiply 16 by to get 64? What I'm really going to look for is, what can I multiply 6 by to get a number that ends in 4? Well, 6 times 1 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 3 is 18, times 4 is 24. So I'm going to try that. 6 times 4 is 24, so I 
right four down. It's 24 and not two, so I'm going to bring the two up here. So now it's 20. Four times one is four plus two more is 64. So winner, winner. So now my 64 divided by 16 becomes four because I have to do it backwards. This is the number I'm looking for. Plus nine times two minus one. So again, back to the tower, no parentheses, no exponents. There is a multiply, nine times two is 18. Okay, back to the well again. Nope, 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 yes. So the first one is an addition, and uh, 4 plus 18 gives me 22, minus 1. And then I'm to the final level, 22 minus 1 is 21. So my final answer for this is all this. Now you may think, that is insane. Why would I ever write all that stuff out? And the answer to that question is because it's extremely good practice for uh, getting the correct answer. Many of you will not need to do it, but this is the type of question where you can be too smart for the question in a way, and you make one little careless mistake, and then you do a ton of work in your head for nothing because the question is incorrect. So uh, the ACT works that way too. Little things can cause you to get an incorrect answer, even if you knew how to do it, and it's very frustrating. That's what people get really frustrated about math because in many cases at this level, it's not that it's... Con the content is super hard. It's just, it's easy to make little mistakes. And then high school algebra is really little mistakes mean big differences. So going through the process early on gets you the steps much faster. Now you may have been able to do all this part in your head and skip some steps. So 12 divided by two is of course six. And then you do 15 minus five is 10 plus six is 16. That would skip you all the way down to here. And then you could start thinking, okay, do I have this? But if it was me, I would definitely be drawing some version of the pyramid just to give myself a reminder. And then I'd kind of work from there to finally get to my answer of 21. So all these steps may not be necessary, but they if you are frustrated with math, they do make everything take a little longer, but you get the answer more often correct. So it's a nice strategy to build into your life, even if it takes a bit more time. Now, if you're on a timed test, sometimes you have to make some adjustments just for the sake of brevity so that you can get things in on time, but that doesn't mean that you should just totally throw everything to the winds because you don't want to do it. So, you know, take your medicine, fill out all the parts that you need to here, and uh, you can get to the correct answer more often than not.